Savior. He is the great I am. He is the bright and morning star. Oh, he brought me out of so many different dark places and showed me the light. He has shown me. He has proven to me. And you know what? God doesn't have to prove himself to us. He doesn't have to. But he has proven to me time and time again that I am not forgotten. of God for another day, for just one more day. Tomorrow's not promised to me or anyone else. So I'm going to give him a crazy praise. Hallelujah. I mean, the youth that are here remember, right, right youth, y'all remember? I want y'all to do it one time with me. Shabbat! Shabbat! Oh man, I mean, I know it's, it's not many of us here. But I know we can be louder. We louder at the football games, basketball games, clubs, whatever else we do in our spare time. So I want y'all to shout for Jesus. 
On the count of three. One, two, three. Shabbat! Those are the gremlins. Those are the gremlins. Those are the gremlins. of your beds there is reason to celebrate oh man but I ain't gonna spend too much time talking I just want to welcome you all to Christ Triumphant Church this morning we know that you could have been anywhere else in the world but you chose to be right here with us more importantly in the presence of God and we want you to know that Christ Triumphant Church is the most loving church in the Dallas Fort Worth area Amen. We want you to know that we love you. Okay. Now, you know, sometimes we get off track, things like that, but that's okay. Turn around and come on back because we love you and there is absolutely nothing that you can do about it. Amen. Amen. So a handshake is cool. That's all right. That's good. But we like the hug. We're a hugging church. So we want you to get out of your seats. We want you to greet your neighbor in the name of in the name of love, which is Jesus. Amen. Amen. We love you. There is nothing you can ever do. Talk about it. If you get on track, turn around and come right back. We love you. There is nothing you can ever do. Place to stay. Go back to me. 
Good morning, CTC, and welcome to Christ Triumphant Church. On behalf of Pastor Jones and myself, we'd like to welcome our first-time guests. Amen. Amen. On this wonderful Communion Sunday, September 6, 2015. Welcome to CTC, and we'd like again to thank all our guests for joining us. And at this time, we would like to ask all first-time guests to get your smartphone and please text the word welcome to the number 214-444-7968. Again, if you are a first-time guest, we'd like to ask you to text the word welcome to 214-444-7968. And once again, on behalf of Pastor Jones and myself, thank you for visiting with us on this wonderful Sunday. Just as a reminder, Saints, we like to we have moved our Bible studies to Triumphant Life Institute. That's at 350 Oaks Trail, Suite 224 in Garland, Texas. It starts at 7 o'clock p.m. And please join us for Wednesday night word study this coming up Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Amen. It's simplified for everyone to understand. And actually, we do kind of have fun um, doing the exercises, the different things that Pastor Jones um, tells us to do because it's preparing us for ministry, amen, and for we to be even sharper as we share his word. Calling all men. Football season is here, and for all you football fans, we're kicking off our men's fellowship with the season opener of the New York Giants versus the Dallas Cowboys. The game will take place on September, September 13th, and the location to be announced. Okay, they've narrowed, narrowed it down to two. Okay, so all men, amen. And so for all those, how many women like football? Okay, so you know what? I don't know, maybe you're excluding some of the women, but I'll probably be in the lawn. I'm just joking, amen. <laughs> amen, no. So men's fellowship. Um, we will have class 310 public speaking for ministry on Tuesday, September 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Please sign up to see Brother Paul and one of our greeters. You know what? If Public speaking, yes, for God, but if you are any type of leadership position in your church or if you're a student and you want to, like, get polished, this is an excellent opportunity to speak amongst friends because, as you all well know, that Pastor Jones is an amazing speaker. And I'm not saying that because his wife, but he really is an amazing speaker. And so if you want to polish and prepare yourself for the next level, I encourage young and old, please come out to this class. You will have an amazing time. If you have any type of shyness or it's difficult for you to talk to people or you just want to know how do you prepare three points, whether you're giving a, a leadership meeting at school, on your job, if you're doing a talk for church, if you're leaving in Bible school, I really encourage you to come out to this. It's going to be on 630 on Tuesday, September 22nd, and it's going to be class 310. Men, as once again, football season is here. And for all the football fans, we're not kicking off your, your men's fellowship opener. Amen. That was a repeat. Amen. I apologize. Married and engaged couples. Our next couple series will begin on Monday, October 19th and run each month since November 16th. And we're going to be doing something different. Um, normally, we use a type of curriculum. Um, we're going to do something different. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a topical study. Amen. And so the topics to be announced, but Pastor Jones and myself were talking about how can we make it, you know, um, meaty where people want to come if you've already been through it. You're like, well, I may not want to hear the same thing. So we're going to do topical studies, you know, some, some fun things, some maybe um, personal things, just, you know, things that marriage couples go through. Amen. And if even if you may have an awesome marriage or, you know, You've been there and you know the things. Bring another couple who you know can have a, a great time or have, have an object, objective opinion. Amen. Uh, please have your pens ready and take a moment to view the screen for the list of important announcements and dates to make note of. And also you have your programs. And at this time, Saints, take out your smartphones. Check in and post on ctcfacebook.com. Amen. Slash Christ Triumphant. And at this time, we're going to welcome Brother Paul Green as we prepare for our morning offerings. Amen. Praise God. It's 
Thanksgiving time, yo. That was really good. Wow, that was a good one, yeah. Yeah. We getting it now. We getting it, right? Give and it will come back to you. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for that hundredfold blessing. I'm looking for that one. I'm, I'm looking for that one. Praise God. If you're, if, you're, if you're making out a check, you can make it out to CTC or Christ Triumphant Church. Amen. Just giving you a little time to get your get your envelopes together if you, if you want to write on your envelope too. Amen. Amen. So if we could all stand as we're about to do our financial faith confession, it will be up on the board here. But if you can't, if you're unable to see it, we also have it printed on the back of our uh, giving envelopes. And uh, we're going to say it on the count of three, all together. One, two, three. Father, I know that you have a financial plan for the believer called tithes and offerings. At this moment, I set my heart to tap in your financial plan for me. Satan will not rob me anymore in my finances. In the name of Jesus, by faith, I am at this moment planting my financial seed into the kingdom of God's field. I am doing this because I know that this is a biblical truth, and I set my heart to obey the word. Father, I also know that it is a biblical truth that in return for my financial faithfulness, you will supply all my needs and above all my needs. In Jesus' name, I hold fast to my confessions in your financial plan. God bless you and thank you for your liberality. Shake it together and run and over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give, give to the Lord. When you give, give to the Lord. When you give, give to the Lord. Praise God. And this, the next voices that you'll hear is that of our First Lady and our Pastor Jones. If we could stand as we receive them. Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask everyone to please stand and put your Bibles in your right hand as we make our faith confession. How many of you know God is awesome? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is awesome. I know there has been an attack on who God is or if there is even a God. But for those who know, amen, our God is awesome. Amen. And he's deserving of every praise. Hallelujah. 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 I am what the word of God says that I am. I can have what the Word of God says that I can have. I can do what the Word of God says I can do. The Word of God is right 
and it is coming to pass in my life. Amen. Let's say this. Lord, anoint Pastor Jones. Say it again. Lord, anoint Pastor Jones. Amen. 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 Praise God. Somebody say, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? Let's, let's remain standing. Remain standing with me. Since you're standing, let me go ahead and have, let's go ahead and read our text for today. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to, in your Bibles to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians. Chapter 3. Amen. Somebody say amen. If you've been in church before, say amen. Amen. If it's your first time, say amen anyway. <laughs> amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3. We're reading from the New King James Version. We're going to read one verse. Somebody say one verse. I'm going to attempt to unpack this, this, this one verse for us today. One verse. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Verse 20. Can we read that together? One, two, ready, read. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, today, with, our, with God's help, our prayers, and our loud amens. Come on and say, our loud amens. Our pastor is going to talk about expand your expectations. Come on, do that with your hand when you're talking to them. Expand your expectations. Come on, do it just like that. Expand your expectations. Find, find three people and tell them, expand your expectations. 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 Amen. You may be seated. Expand your expectations. Have you ever had someone or something blow your mind? Hey Amen. My wife just said, Pastor Jones, hey. Hey. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We, 19 years, it'll be, it'll, it'll be this Tuesday. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I looked up uh, the, the term blow your mind to blow someone's mind and it and there were a couple of definitions that I was able to find to disturb or distract or even to destroy the function of one's brain. <laughs> Another definition to overwhelm someone to excite someone. To have your mind blown means that something has exceeded your expectations. It was just fine just a second ago, guys. You, yeah, it was just fine just a second ago. You can back off. Amen, amen. We're still working it out. We've got, we've got, we've got some new equipment over here, and we're still working it out. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Now, y'all can back it down a little bit. A amen. Or wh whatever, whatever adjustment hit you just made it's just, a, just a moment ago. You can, amen. There you go. Well, I'll just stop talking. How about that, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. God wants to blow your mind. Tell somebody, God wants to blow your mind. God wants to blow your mind. God wants to do something for you that is so far beyond your expectations, so far beyond your ability to comprehend, so far beyond your ability to, to wrap your head around it. God wants to do something supernatural. And oftentimes we are so caught up in our natural that we cannot appreciate God for his supernatural. All we can see is the possibility of what God can do for us or what we can do in our natural. And so many times we lean and depend completely on our natural. Somebody say sometimes we, we lean on our natural. 
As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the Bible tells us to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. And then it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You know that scripture. You know, you know that passage of scripture, Proverbs chapter 3, verse, uh, you know, verse, verse 5. And, 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 it, and it, simply, it simply lets us know that we have to lean not on our own abilities, not on our own capacities, not on our own capabilities, but lean on the ability of God to absolutely, positively blow your mind. Has God ever blown your mind? Have you ever had something that you were, you were expecting one thing and then all of a sudden it came out and, and the way it worked out, it just worked out, so, it worked out so well that you had to laugh out loud? You had to LOL before you knew anything about text messages or Facebooks. You, 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 knew, you knew God, God, you just blew my mind. You just, you just opened my eyes to a possibility I had never seen before. As a matter of fact, in the Bible, uh, you know, God, God made Sarah laugh in the Bible. Um, you know, uh, when, when he told her in the Bible, he said that you're going to have a baby. You're going to have a baby. And she said, how in the world can I have a baby when I'm this old? She was very old. And, and God told her that she was going to have a baby. And he and, and it made her laugh and ultimately God did bring to pass exactly what he said because he has the capacity to do that which you have no reason to even believe or no reason to even fathom or no reason to even expect or no reason to even, you know, to even, even think in your mind. God can blow your mind. The reason why I serve God is because I have seen and I have experienced him blowing my mind. He has exceeded my expectations so many times and so many times over. God can blow my mind. God can blow your, God can blow, somebody tell yourself somebody, God can blow your mind. God can blow your mind. And knowing that God can blow your mind, it, 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 we, we come to this passage of scripture today that we're, that we're reading where Paul, Paul, somebody say Paul the apostle. Now Paul is called the he's he's called an apostle. The word apostle, it simply it comes from a Greek word means meaning you know a Greek word apostolos, which actually means a, a messenger or someone who is sent. Somebody say someone who is sent. Come on, say it loud and proud. Someone who is sent. You might want to write that down. Write that write that down. The the, the word apostle means someone who is sent because I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna come back to it uh, in, in a bit here. It is someone who is sent. You, 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 you notice here in the text that Paul, the apostle, is speaking. He is sent, but not only does that word apostle mean someone who is sent, it also means uh, someone who is sent with a message. Someone say, with a message. He comes with a message, and the message that he brings in this particular passage, keep your Bibles open to Ephesians chapter 3 there. The message that he brings in this, in this text, he says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. It, 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 this message that he brings to us begins with a particular word, begins with the word now. Somebody say now. Yeah. I need you to say that a little louder. Say now. I want you to understand, I want you to understand, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to try to move as quickly as I can because I, I want to get these points out, I want to get, you know, the, the information out, I might, you know, I, I always plan to preach about 20 minutes and then I end up, I end up preaching and, and, and then doing a little teaching and it ends up adding a little bit to, to some stuff, but the bottom line is I, I want to make sure that you get and you, that you understand and so make sure you're ready to take notes. If you've got your smartphones, your tablets, your, your notepads, whatever the case may be, be ready to take notes as best you can. Be ready to take notes as best you can. This word now, somebody say now. Too often, too often we cannot appreciate our now because we're too caught up in our yesterday. We're so, we're so handicapped. And the, 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 the first thing for, for us to note, the, the first thing for us to note is that God wants us, God wants us to be so distracted by our destiny that we don't have time to be handcuffed to our history. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. You need to catch that. God wants us so distracted. If you are distracted by your destiny, then you cannot be handcuffed by your history. The stuff that happened to you, the stuff that happened yesterday, the stuff that people did to you, the stuff that people took from you, the things that you lost, the mistakes that you made, it was yesterday. The past is the past. And knowing that the past is the past, you need to understand God has a now and God has a future for you. But too often we are so caught 
caught up in what happened yesterday that we cannot celebrate what's going on right now. God has brought me this far not to leave me. He didn't leave me, bring me this far to leave me. He didn't bring me through storms and through rain to leave me. He didn't bring me through the trials and tribulations of my life all to leave me in this situation. God brought me this far because he still has a plan for me. I, I, can I drop something on you? If you still have breath in your body today, you need to understand that God must have a purpose. God must have a plan. If he brought you through this, then that means he's taking you to that. Oh, I need you to catch that. If he brought you through this, he must be taking you to that. And so what you have to do is understand and appreciate the fact that the, 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 the text begins with the word now. You need to be able to celebrate and appreciate God right now. You need to be able to praise God right now and give God glory right now. Give God thanks right now for what he has already done. Give God thanks not just for what he's done, not just for how he's hooked you up, but just for who he is. He is worthy of all the praise and all the glory just because of who he is. Just because of how great and how awesome he is. Just because, just because he first loved you, he is worthy of the praise right now. Somebody say now. Now unto him. Now, 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 now. If you get caught up in your now, if you can appreciate your now, let me say it like that. If you can appreciate your now, you won't be handicapped by your history. And then and, and what, we, what, what we really want to do is be so focused on what's going on, what's, where, where God is taking us to, that we don't have time to cry over who left us. We don't have time to cry over who didn't like us. We don't have time to cry over who didn't appreciate us. We don't have time to whine and lament over what happened yesterday. There are, th there are people who did not appreciate you. They did not understand you. They did not, they did not appreciate all that you brought to the table. They didn't like the, something that, that, that you said or the way that you said it. They, they may not just not, not have liked your face. They may not have liked the way you talked or something like that. But the bottom line is there are people who, who they, they didn't like something about you and they may have moved on and they had to move out of your life. But God God says, listen, you, I couldn't get you to your now if I didn't allow what happened yesterday. If I didn't, all that happened yesterday is part of what makes you who you are right now. If you are any good today, it's because of some bad that you might have gone through yesterday. If you have anything good today, it's probably because of something that God ex, ex, excavated out of your life and extracted out of your life yesterday. There are some relationships you got right now that you would not be able to have if you were still caught up on that knucklehead that you were dating two years ago. God wants you to understand. God wants you to get excited about your now. Somebody say now. You need to be excited about your now and realize that God is still in the blessing business right now. We used to sing a song when I was a little kid that they, they used to sing a song that said the Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. Somebody say, oh, right now. Oh, right now. It said the Lord is blessing me. Oh, right now. Oh, right now. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now. Right now. Oh, right now. Somebody say, oh, right now. And you've got to appreciate the fact that God is blessing me right now. Somebody say, right now. God is blessing me right now. And if I can learn, if I can, if I can learn to get out of my history, what is what I'm supposed to get out of it, then I can appreciate and I can celebrate and I can do what I need to do right now. The right now, there is some stuff that you're supposed to be doing right now. And if you're too caught up in what happened yesterday, then you cannot do what you're supposed to do right now. Somebody say now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants, God, so, so God wants to take us out of our history. Let me give you three things. That, and this, these, aren't, these aren't even points, but let me give you three things that you, that you should do with your history. Can I give you three things you should do with your history? And this is just, 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 just a teachable moment, if, if you don't mind. Three things you should do with your history, Romantha, and, you, and it's so good to see you. Three things you should do with your history. Here, here it is. Can I, can I give them to you? Here, here, three things you should do with your history. Number one, appreciate it. Somebody say appreciate it. Appreciate, appreciate what has happened in your history, whether it's good or whether it's bad. Appreciate it. Somebody say appreciate it. Number two, you need to apply the lessons you learned from it. Apply. 
Appreciate, apply. Apply the lessons that you learned from your history. You learned, you, 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 you learned that there were some things you should do. You learned some things that you shouldn't do. I tell people all the time, I failed so miserably in business at times that I guarantee you I could write a book on well, a thousand one ways not to run a business. I can get, and, 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 and what we have to do is appreciate what, what our history is, but apply the lessons that we learned from our history. You need to get that. And if you don't get anything else, you need to take that with you right there. Apply the lessons that you learned from yesterday. Don't ever have to say, I don't know twice. Don't ever have to, don't ever have to, you know, they, they say uh, once bitten, twice shy, right? There ought to be some lessons that after, after I have, listen, after I've gone through that before, you know what, I'm not going to go through that same thing again. Amen? So I've got to appreciate. I've got to apply. Somebody say appreciate, apply, and then advance. So come on, there it is. There it is. That, you, that was your shoutable moment right there. If you don't have anything else to shout about about your history, it's the fact that God is not going to keep you stuck in the molasses of your history. You do not have to be stuck in the quicksand of what happened to you yesterday. I, I know they hurt you. I know they let you down. I know they left you. I know they lied on you. I know they, 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 they drug your name through the mud. I, I know that, that, that it hurt. I know that it was a painful situation. Yo, preacher, but you don't know what I'm going through right now. You're talking about my now, but you don't know. You don't know what I'm going through right now. Right now, I'm going through pain. Right now, I'm going through misery. You don't know what those people took from me. You don't know how they lied on me. You don't know how they stabbed me in the back. You don't know how they talked about. I had some folk talk about me this week, but God vindicates those who he loves. I tell you, God vindicates those who he loves. His word says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He says, I will repay. In other words, you don't have to go and pay back evil for evil. When people do you wrong, you don't have to go back and try to fight your own battles. You go ahead and you keep on loving. You keep on loving. You keep on loving. You keep on loving because the Bible says if you can't love people, then you don't know God. And you can't say that I love God and don't have the capacity to love people. It amazes me how people want to tell you, how people want to say, oh, well, I, I love serving the Lord, but I can't stand these people. I can't stand out that these people get on my nerves. Well, you got some nerve. <laughs> hey Amen. You, 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 need, you need to, if they're getting on your nerves all the time, maybe you ought to move your nerves. Why are you always wearing your feelings on your shoulders and move, wearing your nerves on your shoulders to the point where everybody gets on your nerves all the time? Maybe you should, maybe if every, let, 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 can I break this down to you like four flat tires in such, can I break it down to you in such a way that you might want to even throw something at me, but that's all right. I can bob and weave. Can I break it down to you? Let me tell you this. If everybody gets on your nerves, you need to realize there is a common denominator. There is a common denominator. What is the common denominator? You. Why is every, if everybody gets on your nerves, at some point you ought to recognize, well, maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm being too sensitive about this situation. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm looking for a fight. Some of us look for a fight. I'm from East St. Louis, and every now and then, I do really look for a fight. I, I do, I do. It's just, it's just in my nature. It, every, every now and then, it, a little drama just has to pop off in my life. It just has to. A little, little, I, gotta have, I gotta have a little drama just to be able to feel a little nostalgic. I need some, some, some cookies and milk and some cartoons and some drama every now and then. That's because, because some of us just have that within us. And so sometimes you gotta be able to look at yourself and say, you know what, I, that's it there. Yeah, that's me. That was me. That, I brought that on myself. Have I got a witness? We need to appreciate, apply, and advance. In other words, whatever happened in your history, don't get stuck in it. Advance. Somebody say advance. Somebody say advance. Some, come on, somebody take your hand and say advance. You need to advance. Don't let, don't let, it, don't let yourself get stuck where you are. If you are distracted by your destiny, you will never be handcuffed by your history. Second point that I want to show you today in this text. Second point, the second thing I want to show you in this text. Second thing I want to show you. Now, that's, that's the now. I, I'm, I'm just up to one word, y'all. I'm just up to one word. I just want to un unpack this text a little bit. Hey, Amen. I'm just up to one word. Now. Somebody say, now. Yes. Now to him. Somebody say to him. Yes. Oh, man. Can we talk about him? Can we talk? Oh, yeah, yeah. has anybody here ever been in church and just, just, and just, and you know, do you even know why you're here? Do you even know who the him is? Now to him, now to him. Can I back up just a little bit? Can I back up just a little bit? Let's talk about the context 
uh, leading into this now and this hymn and all this stuff. Let me, so I can just set, set the stage for you. Back up, back up to verse 14. Paul, the apostle Paul, what did I say the ap uh, apostle meant? One who is sent, and one who is sent with a message. He is sent, and he is sent with a message. That means he is qualified. That means, and think about it, that if you are sent, that means somebody sent you. And the only time, the only time I would ever send someone on my behalf with a message is if I trained them, I tried them, and I trust them. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all not trying to, y'all not trying to pray with me today. Can y'all write that down real? Just write, just write. If the the reason why you're able to be sent is because you've been trained, you've been tried, and you've been trusted. If you're going to be sent, you, you, it's going to be because God has trained you. He has tried you, and he has trusted you. There's, there's, there's training, trying, and trusting. Okay, and, and like I said, that wasn't even in, that wasn't in the message. I just wanted to give you all that, give you all that, amen? Because, you, because every now and then you just need little, little things that you can remember for yourself because it, 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 might, it, might, it might save your spiritual life, amen? Verse 14, verse 14, Paul, Paul gives us some context about this passage. Now, we sing this song all the time. God is able to do. Just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, for he won't give up on you. He's a, right? We sing that song, and it starts off exceedingly, abundantly, above all, right? And, and, and it's quoting this verse. But the thing is, sometimes we fail to appreciate some of the context. Can I break down the context? Can I, is, is that all right? Can I just break, it, break down the context just a little bit? All right, so Paul says, for this reason, somebody say, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For this reason, now Paul is talking to the church and the Christians who are in a place called Ephesus. Now, to give you even a little bit more history on that, uh, the, the, one of the manuscripts, one of the Greek manuscripts that, that they found uh, for this, for this uh, book, to the Ephesians, where it says, to the church at Ephesus. One of, one of or actually a, a couple of the manuscripts that they, that they found actually, uh, actually does not contain the term Ephesus in it. It doesn't actually say Ephesus. In other words, it was believed that this was a chain letter. Somebody say a chain letter. That, that was actually sent not just to the church at Ephesus, but to several other churches as well. Oh, oh, Y'all almost with me. Y'all almost with me. It was like it was like a group text message before they had iPhones. Oh, Y'all almost with me. It was like a mass email before they had blind carbon copies. Oh, is anybody with me? Are, 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 are you with me? All right. So so here so 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 in other words, Paul is not just talking to somebody who's in one place. He's giving this word to all who are Christians. So in other words, when he's talking to them, he's talking to me. It is a terrible, terrible thing for me to get to, to read the word and not appreciate and not see myself in the text. Come, come on, somebody say, I need to see myself. Come on, find somebody, look him in the eye and tell him, you need to see yourself in the text. He's not just talking to the church at Ephesus. He's talking to you. Come on, tell somebody he's talking to you. He's talking to me. Come on, look at somebody else and tell them, yeah, he's talking to me. He's talking to me here. He's talking to me. He's talking to me. So, 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 he's talking to you. Paul says, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, he says, I am praying for you. He says, I am praying. Somebody say, I pray. I pray. One of the reasons why you're able to even make it up to your now is because somebody prayed for you, Brianna. Before you had the capacity to even know how to, how to, how to do your arithmetic in, in school, Elijah, guess what? Somebody was praying for you. Somebody was thinking about you. Some, there's an old song that says, somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Somebody prayed for you. And the thing is that you really need to realize is that if God, if God is going to use you, there's going to be somebody who prayed for you and somebody else who invested in you, somebody else who did something for you. In other words, you didn't do it all by yourself. You don't owe who you are and what you are all to yourself. Are y'all with me? 
You don't owe, somebody, lift up your hands and say, somebody put in on this. Somebody put it, it might be, it might be, it might be a mess, but somebody else helped me with this mess. <laughs> Amen. If you like something that you see, somebody else help me with this. It, like, look, if, if you, it, it, I, I, I put it like this. If you like, if you like the way the tie looks with this jacket, somebody help me with this. If you like the way that the shoes look with the, with the pants, somebody help me with this. I was about to wear some, some, some other color shoes and I walked downstairs and my daughter said, no, daddy, mm -mm, no, no, that's not going to work. Somebody had to help me with this. In other words, you cannot do it by yourself. You are not a lone ranger. You, you need your tonto. You need somebody to stand alongside of you. You need somebody to get to go on your to go to God on your behalf. And the reason why you need it is because there are times where you are too weak or too distracted by your own stuff to be able to even know how to pray. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit has to, to has to uh, go to God on our behalf with groanings and utterings, uh, uh, utterances, utterances that that we, we we don't even know what to pray for. We don't even know how to talk. To God and the Holy Spirit speaks to him on our behalf. The Bible calls Jesus our advocate and says that Jesus will speak up uh, to the Father as he sits on the right hand and say, 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 God, don't, 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 don't get him for that. They, 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 they give, give him another chance. In other words, you need somebody to stand alongside of you, to come alongside of you. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the paraclete, the, the paraclete, the, the, the paracletos, which means that he comes alongside, parallel to you. He, he comes along side of you and helps you walk along the way. Even when you start to limp, you got somebody who's going to help you walk along the way. Somebody came along and helped you. Somebody say, somebody helped me. Somebody helped you. Somebody helped you. Paul says, Paul says, for this reason, I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ from the whole, who, from the whole family, uh, from whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named, that he would grant you. Somebody say he. That he would, I'm going to talk about that he in just a moment, that he would grant you, he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, according to the riches of his glory. Can somebody say according? According, according to the riches of his glory. Oh man, I, 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 I need to illustrate this. I need to illustrate this. I need to, I need to help, you, uh, help you catch this. Somebody say according. according. All right. If, if, uh, and I, I think I've, I've, I've probably done this in Bible study or some, somewhere along the way, but it's, it's important for us to understand this concept of according to. Whenever we see according to, it, it means something specific. Uh, if, if you were to ask me, if I have $100, praise the Lord. If I had $100, I'm going I'm to I'm start dancing right on the spot now. Now, if I have $100 and, uh, and you come along and you ask me for, for, uh, for $20, and I give you 50 cents. I have given to you something that you did not earn, something that you did not deserve, something you, know, you don't necessarily deserve, you didn't earn it, it's not yours. It is a gift from me. Are you with me? It is mine to give and mine to determine how I give it. Are you with me? You asked me for 20, I gave you 50 cents. You ought to be grateful for the 50 cents because I gave you out of my riches. Somebody say out of. Now, if, you, if you're taking notes, write that down because you need to catch the, 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 the phraseology here. That mean, that, that's out of my riches. I have $100. I gave you 50 cents. I gave you out of my riches. Are you with me? Now, if, 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 I, if I, on the other hand, have $1,000, <laughs> praise the Lord, and you come along and you ask me for $20, and I give you $100, I need you to follow and stay with me. You asked me for 20, you asked me for 20, I gave you 100. At this point, I have given you more than what you asked for because I was giving you according to my riches. You're almost there, you're almost there. Somebody say according to. To be in accordance with means it is proportionate. It is out. It is based upon the ratio. It is, it is. It is some level of the ratio based upon what I have. So if I've got, if I have, if I have one uh, hundred dollars, and you ask me for twenty dollars, I give you twenty dollars. Then you know that you know that's that's just me giving you what you asked for. But when you ask me for twenty dollars, and actually I have more than that to be able to give you, and I give you more than that, I have given you more than that because I'm giving you according to my riches. 
Are you with me? I'm giving it to you. You're, not, you're, you're still lost? You're still lost? Hold on, hold on. You don't have to ask questions. We're not in Bible study right now. <laughs> if it, if, no, no. She's about, to, she's, about to, she's about to mess with me. She's about to mess with me about, about our, our about house finances. That's what she, I, I already know. I already, but but are, are you, are you, uh, think about it. So if I've given you more than what you asked for, I'm giving it to you not based on what you asked for or what your need was. I've given it to you according to my riches. So look at, what, look at what the text says here. Look at what the text says here. He would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Somebody say, according to the riches. In other words, God is, not, God is not a man who only has a certain amount. God's riches are so vast that when Paul is praying, Paul is praying for God to bless you accordingly with what he has. With, according to the bigness of what he has. In other words, many times what we're doing is we're not at, we're, we're God, in other words, God is going to blow your mind. Are you with me? God has the capacity to blow you. You come and you ask for $20 and God gives you $100. You go up to somebody and you ask them for $20 and they give you $100. That'll blow your mind. Amen? You ask for, you ask for $20 and they give you $1,000. That'll really blow your mind. Are you with me? That, that, that's, what, that's, that's what she was waiting on. She was waiting for me to do the illustration of the, uh, well, if I have $10,000 and I give you $1,000, that'll really, yeah. But the, the bottom line is God gives you according to his riches. Are y'all with me? He gives you according to his, somebody say according. So God, so, so here's, here's, here's what the prayer is. The prayer is that God would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Here it is. He's going to grant you to be strengthened. Somebody say to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. In other words, he's not, he's not even talking about you being blessed financially. He's not talking about you getting new cars. He's not talking about you getting a new house. He's not talking about you having new clothes and new robe and new wigs and new, 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 uh, new nails. And new. He's talking about something on your inner man. Somebody say your inner man. The reason being because there's something that you are going to need to do that your money will not be able to help you do. There is something that you're needing to do later in the text that your, your house cannot be able to house. There's something that you're going to need to do that all the cuteness and all the makeup and all the hair and all the nails and all this stuff will never be able to give you access to. He says, I want you, he says, I am praying. I am, somebody say, he praying. He's praying, he's praying, he says, I'm praying that God would grant you according to the riches of his glory. He's going to hook you up on your inner man in such a way that is in accordance with how much he has. He has so much for you, he has riches for you that are beyond your ability to comprehend. And you might be asking for one thing, it's like this, you might go and you ask for, you ask for somebody to give you a fish and God says, I will teach you how to fish. Are you, are, you, are you getting there? In other words, I will give you the capacity within you to be able to be a producer. Can you say that word producer? Too often, time, too often we're caught up in being consumers, but God wants to make you a producer. Somebody say producer. <sighs> that he might grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his, through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. In other words, he's, he's trying to tell you, listen, you need to, you, you, he wa I want to make you, I, I want to pray that you are deep and you are strong and so that when stuff does come about in your life, and it will, they're going, there's going to be pain, there's going to be frustrations, there's going to be hurt, there's going to be heartache, people are going to let you down, people are going to walk away from you, there's going to be all kinds of things that happen to you. But he says, listen, I am praying that God put something down on the inside that makes it so that when the winds and the waves start to hit you, you might rock, but you won't fall down. You, you might wobble, but you won't fall down. Have you, anybody know something about a weeble there? Weebles may wobble, but they don't fall down. He says, I want to, he says, I am praying. Praying that something is in you that you get strengthened on your inner man. I'm not praying about your money. I'm not praying about your finances. God knows how to handle all of that. I'm not praying about God giving you the hook up. I'm praying that God gives you the hook in. That he puts a hook in you and he holds you and not, not just a little bitty hook but a big old anchor that anchors you and makes you solid and makes you sturdy and makes you strong and strengthens you on the inner man so that when the hell of life and when the storms of life start hitting you, 
You can stand and stand and stand and you might take a blow but you'll still be standing. You might take another blow but you'll still be standing. And even though you might fall down, you still know how to get back up because he put something in you that will not let you lay down in the muck of that mess that you're in. Can we go back to the now now? Somebody say now. All right, all right. Uh, so, so I told you, I told you, I told you, you don't want to get caught up in your, so caught up in your history that you, that you, that you fail to get excited about your destiny. Can I, can I, can I illustrate this with a, with a, with a scripture? I, I've got to illustrate this with a scripture. Uh, turn to John chapter five, John chapter five, John chapter five. Amen. And if you, and if you, if you got me there. I want, I want y'all to say amen for Isis. She, she, she's over there. She, she takes care of us over there. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. In John chapter 5, and, I'm, and I, I want you to take note of it, and, uh, you know, but keep your, keep your finger over in Ephesians. Don't lose Ephesians because we've got to get back to it. In John chapter 5, I, I, might, I might go ahead and turn, turn there with you. I wanted you to just see it, but I'm going I'm to just tell you a little bit about it. Okay, because you've seen this before. You've, you've seen this text before. If you've been in church for any, any period of time, you've seen this. Okay, John chapter 5, um, verse, I'm going to start, I'll just start reading at verse 1. I'll try to read as fast as I can. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which in, in Hebrew tongue is Bethesda, having five porches. That's what it means, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Somebody say waiting. Oh, I, can y'all, can y'all, I need you to look at that in the text. I need y'all to see that. I need you to see that. Waiting for the move. Somebody say it with me just like that. Waiting for the moving of the water. Can you say it one more time? Waiting for the moving of the water. Now, let's move on. Let's move on. They're waiting for the moving of the water. They're, they're, they're just waiting. They're just waiting. Somebody say they're just waiting. Verse 4 says, for an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. An angel went down at a certain time. Somebody said a certain time. At a certain time or a certain season. At a certain season, uh, the, uh, you know, one, one translation says at a certain season, or here it says at a certain time. Now here's what I want. I, I, I need to illustrate this. I, I'm going to have to illustrate this a little bit because you need to kind of catch the, the idea here. Okay. Um, Trey and uh, Trey and Rel and uh, Isaiah, y'all come, y'all come over here. Y'all come over here. All right. Come on. Y'all come on. Come on. Y'all got to move quickly. You got to move quickly. Okay. All right. So the water's over there. Everybody, everybody, everybody take your hand and just kind of point towards the water. Point towards the water. All right. So y'all, 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 y'all looking at the water. The water's over that way. Okay. The water's over that way. Y'all, y'all, you look like you're, you act like y'all looking at, come on, act like some actors. Come on. Look at the water. Look at the water. Yeah. Come on. Look at the water. Look at the water. Come on, you're looking at the water. The water's down here. It's not down there. It's not out there. The water's right here. The water's right here. All right, now, here's, what, here's what's happening. They're looking at the water. They're looking at the water, right? They're over there looking at the water. And, and all of a sudden, little Raleigh, he throws a pebble over into the pool. <laughs> and the water starts to move. And they say, ooh, who is that? The, is, that is that the angel? Is that the angel? No, that's just somebody throwing, water, throwing a pebble in the pool. Then the wind starts to blow real hard at one point. The wind blows real hard, and they look, and they say, oh, wait, wait, is that the angel? Is that the angel? No, it's not the angel. It's just the wind blowing. And so there, what are they doing, y'all? Waiting. Come on, say it with me. Waiting for the moving of the water. Because they're waiting on an angel to do something in that water. In the meantime, there's a guy on the other side who is, behind, who is, who is paralyzed, and he's not able to get himself down into the water. He's over here. And they're all looking that way. Now, y'all point your finger over there. All, all of y'all, all of y'all, you, you're all paralyzed or, look, or, or, or lame or whatever. You, and this guy is over here, and he does not have anybody to put him in the pool if the water did. You know, so, so the water starts to stir. When the water starts to stir, and people think that it's the, think it's the angel, they go and try to get in. Go, yeah. So the water starts to stir. Go ahead, try to get in. Can I try to get in? Yeah, they slow, boy. They, well, they, I don't know. They, they, so they, you go try to get in. So, and then they realize, oh, it's not the angel. So they get out of the water. They get out of the water. All right. Enter Jesus, stage left. Jesus comes in. But hold on. Y'all can't look at me. I'm Jesus. Y'all can't look at me. You know why? Because what are you doing? 
Say it with me. Waiting on the moving of the water. Come on, point your finger over there and look at it. All right, so while you're looking that way, and while this guy's looking that way, Jesus comes up to this guy and says, uh, hey, man, what's, what's going on? What you doing? And this guy tells him, he says, well, when, uh, at a certain season, the angel comes and, and, and troubles the water, and when the angel does that, whoever gets in first is healed of whatever they're going through. But I don't have anybody to put me in the water when I, when, whenever, uh, whenever the water gets troubled. Every day, this, you know, or, or every now and then, every now, somebody say every now and then. Every now and then the water starts to move and the people, but in the meantime, the people are lined up at the pool like they're waiting on the new iPhone. They're just lined up waiting, you know, waiting, at, the, you know, waiting on the, at the edge because they're expecting something to happen. You can have, y'all have a seat, y'all have a seat. Here's the thing, here's the thing, I need, and I need, y'all give them a hand, yeah. Here's the thing I need you to see. It, the whole time that you're focused on this, Jesus is coming from a whole different direction. And the Bible says that Jesus, I'm, come on, come on now, y'all know, y'all know who Jesus is. I'm, I'm not talking about just some angel. This is, the, this is Jesus, y'all. Somebody say, Jesus. Jesus. This is Jesus. He comes on the other side and nobody's even looking at him. Nobody even recognizes. Nobody even sees him. Nobody even bats an eye because they are so caught up in where God used to be. All right, y'all miss it, y'all miss it. That, 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 there it is. It's a dangerous thing to be caught up and found where God used to be. In other words, God has done something before in your life. God has done something. Yeah, listen, you might, I told you, you appreciate it, apply the lessons from it, but advance on from it. Don't be so caught up in how great, you know what, you know what, uh, you know what, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan, and I know it's a couple other Dallas Cowboy fans in here. Any fans in here? All right, it's, it, like I said, it's two or three. It's two or three. It's where two or three are gathered. Where two or three are gathered. There's, that's a scripture about the Dallas Cowboys right there. All right, so the, 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 w, w, my, my boy, my boy, uh, brother Paul here, uh, he posted yesterday, or a couple of days ago, something about, about how the Cowboys are always celebrating our victories or how we used to be great, how we used to be great. And I've got to give him, I got to give him that because the reality is when you, ain't had, when you have not had success in your, in your recent times, your natural go-to move is to go back to when you did have it going on. That's true. Oh, y'all think I'm playing. Y'all think, think I made that up? No. Why you think thir throwback Thursdays? So popular. People, you know, people put, put all kinds of pictures on their Instagram or, and Facebook. Who look at you this is when this is what the way I look before the baby. <laughs> I'm talking about the husband. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what I look like when I had her. <laughs> you know, you know. Throw back there because we listen, listen. I know I'm laughing. I know I got you laughing, but I, I need you to catch that. I need that because what I just gave you is very real. W one of the tricks that the enemy uses against you is that when you are hurting, Romantha, when you are hurting, James, when you are hurting, Jarrell, when you are hurting, Sarah, when you're hurting, when you are hurting, when you are hurting, what he does is he, he makes you want to revert to when something felt good to you. You're hurting now. You're hurting in the situation. Or you, you, you're trying to do right. But as soon as that hurt comes along, that's what, what the enemy does is he makes you want to revert to your yesterday, revert to your history, and you end up going back to that yak. Y'all don't know what the yak is. I don't even, I don't either. I just heard it on a song. I just heard it on the song, but you, 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 go, you go back, you, you, you go back, uh huh? You go back to that, to that, to that, to that knucklehead, huh? You go back to that, to that home girl, that you go back to that neighborhood, you go back to that drink, you go back to that smoke, you go back to that situation, you go back to that addiction, you go back to. Can I help? Can I help just a little bit? Can we talk about the, the that, that, and that's, that sin. That you used that used to feel so good to you, it is a comfort zone for some of us, and what happens is we end up using it as a coping mechanism for the hurt that we're dealing with today. 
So I'm dealing with hurt in my now. I'm, I can't even get past this first word in the text. Hell, can I yell? I, I'm trying to. I, I'm, I'm trying to. It's, I can't. I can't celebrate my now because my now is hurting, and I want to go back to my yesterday when things did feel better. And this is what this. The enemy will make you. He will make you think that there is nothing good left in you. That there is that all of your good and all. Uh, the only thing you had was that shape. And now that the shape is gone, ain't nobody liking you no more. And all you had was your cuteness, and now that you don't have that cuteness no more, then no, nobody. All you had was your money, prodigal son, and now that all your money's gone, all your friends are gone. And, you, and so naturally what we do is, is so, so, imagine, imagine that the prodigal son had not come to himself and gone back home. Imagine that the prodigal son would have just stayed in that pig pen and, and stayed there long enough till, till, till somebody came along and dropped a, dropped a thousand dollars on him and then what would he have done with that thousand dollars he would not have taken that thousand dollars and done something productive with it he would have taken that thousand dollars and done something he would have gone and said hey hey I was mad nah I was mad nah hey y'all want to hang with me don't y'all want to be my friend now hey y'all left me when back then you didn't want me now I'm hot again come on come on get up on me come on don't you don't you want to hang with me now listen the, the reality is the devil will use that as a trick he will use that good time of yesterday that throwback Thursday to mess you up so that you can't go into your future on Monday and on Sunday and do what God wants to listen God has a plan for you that exceeds what you think was awesome yeah you thought you were bad yesterday girl you ain't seen nothing until you see what God can do with you as you yield yourself to him you don't you haven't seen anything until you see what God can do with a yielded and a broken vessel. God can take what is broken and what you think is worthless and God can use it to do exceedingly abundantly above. Oh, all right, all right. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta move. I gotta move. I gotta move. I gotta move. Now unto him. Somebody say now. now. Pastor, hey, Pastor, you just got through one word of the text. Got, one, got through one word. That's all right. That's all right. That's right. One word, one word. When Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It says, now unto him. Somebody say, unto him. Unto him, unto him, unto him. Who is this him? Who is this him? We know that the him that he's referring to is God. Somebody says, God. Now unto him, now unto him. Now I've already prayed for you. Paul says, I've already prayed for you. And he said, and now he's about to give the benediction. Now he's about to close the prayer. Now he's about to come to the conclusion, the denouement, the resolution. Now he's about to come to the place where you're about to have your mind blown. Now he's about to come, he's about to get you to the punchline. He's about to bring home the theme. He's about to do his first close if he's a black preacher. He's about to do his first close. He said, like, I'm about to close now. And so what he does is he says, he says, he says, he says, now unto him. Somebody say him. Yeah. Now unto him. Now unto him. Who is this him? Who is this him? This him is God. Somebody say God. God. It's God. And here's what I want you, here, here's what I'm really trying to get you to get you to understand. You need to expand your expectations because the God that you serve is bigger than your problems. He's bigger than your circumstances. He's bigger than your problems. He, he, he is bigger. Somebody say he's bigger. The Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the earth and the spirit of the Lord moved across the face of the deep and God said, somebody say and God said. When God said, and all of a sudden when God said in verse 3, God spoke, he spoke and he created. As he spoke, the worlds began to take form. And when he spoke, when he, he, he spoke a word and all of a sudden darkness blinked and, and opened his eyes to the reality of light. When God spoke, all of a sudden, all of a sudden that which wasn't all of a sudden was. God spoke. He stepped out on nothing and made it into something because God spoke. God spoke and he created. He is a creative God. Somebody say, he's a creative God. Whenever God says something, you better know that something's about to do, something's about to happen. When God says something, then something's about to move. Something's about to change. When God speaks a word in your life, then whatever was going on in your life before, whatever darkness you were in before, it cannot, it cannot stand. It will be rushed away by the light of God's word. God speaks into, into existence. God speaks, and all of a sudden, the world begins to take form somebody say God speaks 
Yeah, God speaks. God spoke, and God and and, and God and God he, he spoke, and 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 as he spoke, uh, uh, beasts and birds and fishes and fowl swam the rivers and seas, roam the forests and woods. God spoke, and all of a sudden the world began to be veget the, the vegetation started to grow, and the expansion of, of 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 the civilization that that God has spoken into existence began to take form. God spoke. Somebody say God spoke. He spoke, and after all of the after he spoke all of this, the Bible says, he says, it is good. He said, that's good. In other words, before there was a praise team, before there was a praise ministry, before there was praise dance, before there were praise books, before there was praise music, you ought to understand, God was the first praiser. He's praised himself when he says, it is good all by myself. I can praise myself because I know that it is good. I know that it is good, and I know that my mercy endures forever. It is good, and God praised himself the mighty God who stepped out on nothing and spoke it into something the mighty God the absolutely sovereign God he is absolutely in control he is what we call uh, he, he, we, what we call omnipotent omnipotent he is all-powerful there is nothing that he cannot do he is an all-present God he's everywhere at the same time we said it last Sunday omnipresent that means wherever he just came from he's already on his way to and wherever he is is he's already been you need to understand that our God is omnipresent he's also an omniscient God that means that he's all-knowing he's never guessing he's never figuring things out he's never trying to trying to work things out and trying to understand he's never confused God is an omniscient God he is he knows already the end from the beginning he knows the answer before the question is asked he is the I do before the marriage proposal he is the sum total before the equation is even on the page Age. He is a God who knows all and is all and does all. And out of this richness of who he is as God, God is able to speak into your situation. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm talking about a God. Can we talk about God? I'm talking about a God who was never elected and therefore he can never be impeached. I'm talking about a God who sits on the throne. He sits up high, but he's concerned and he looks down low. I'm talking about a God who loves me in spite of me. He's so big, but he's concerned about my little. And so what you've got to understand is that this God, somebody say this God. This God, this God, this God he's no slouch. He's no slouch. He's not, he, he's, he's, he's no shorty. He's no, he, he's no, uh, he, he's, he's, he's no softy. This God, he's tough. He's awesome. This God, somebody say this God. this God. This God, this God, it says now unto him who is able. Somebody say who is able. <sighs> Talking about the ability of God. God's ability, God's ability is directly derived from who God is. All of who I just said God is that leans and leads into his ability to do in your life. He is able, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, uh, matter of fact even if he does not do it, he is able to do it. D don't miss that. Don't miss that. Never think because God didn't do it is because God couldn't do it. It's like when my, if my daughter asked me, Daddy, can I have, uh, Daddy, can I have $20? I use the same illustration. And I say, no, you use, it your, use your own money. Right? By me saying no does not, does not represent the inability for me to do it. Have I got a witness? What in that particular instance I'm doing is I'm saying, I want you to have a participatory miracle. <laughs> oh, where's my towel today? No towel. Oh, that's right there. All right, praise God. Praise. I show Miss Tishon. I show Miss my girl. All right. That's all right. That's all right. If you can't find one, don't worry about it. All right. God wants you to have a participatory miracle. Somebody say participatory. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm, God wants you to participate in your miracle. God wants you to be a part of that which brings to pass the awesomeness in your life. He wants you to be a part of it. it listen, don't sit, look, sleep, and leave and think that you're going to think that, think that all of a sudden your church is going to grow. I, I knew that wasn't going to get an amen, but that's all right. I, 
Amen. God wants you to have a participatory miracle. If you want to see miracles in this church, if you want to see miracles in this house, if you want to see miracles in your life, you have to be a participant. Somebody say a participant. I have to participate. I have to be a part of it. I have to be a part of it. Go, bring, bring up my second point there, if you, if, you, if you don't mind. Bring up the second point. The second thing that you ought, that you ought to understand, we already, already, I already gave you the, the, the first thing. Amen. It's, amen. Now, if I start, getting, if I start having white, white stuff, uh, white flakes and stuff all over my head, then y'all don't laugh. Y'all don't, y'all don't laugh. Y'all just you know, put a picture on Facebook and say, boy, was he preaching. <laughs> He, he preached till he preached till the white stuff was coming out of his out of his pores. And so, oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 So I already told you that if you are if you are distracted by your destiny, you can never be handcuffed by your history. The second thing that I want you to know is this. God's ability is greater than your disability. Whatever it is that you think that you cannot do, God's ability is greater than that. His ability is, is, is expansive beyond that. I know that you've messed up. I know that you feel like you, you can't do it. I, I know that, as a matter of fact, Moses, come, come here, Moses. Moses will tell you, I had a stuttering problem. And Moses will tell you that, that, that God told him to go and speak on his behalf. And Moses said, no, I can't do it because I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm slow of tongue. I, 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 I can't, you know, you can't expect me to be a preacher. You can't expect me to come and teach. You can't expect me to speak on you. You can't send me. You, I, you can't apostolos me. You can't send me on your behalf because I can't carry the message. And God says, listen, listen, you, you listen, I have, listen, who I call, I qualify. If I called, listen, I qualified you while you, were in, while you were out there in that wilderness. I qualified you long before you even realized what was going on. I qualified you while you, was, while you were floating as, you know, as a baby on, on, the, on, on that river before you were even taken in. Moses, Moses did not understand that God had already had his hand on his life. And listen, God will take your very disability and use it to be the very thing that brings people to you and helps people to understand and, and, and appreciate the... the appreciate just how big God is listen if you had too much ability then people would always be focused on your ability and they would never be able to see God's ability in you God's ability somebody said God's ability is greater than my disability uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 2 Corinthians chapter 4 um, verse 7 says we hold this these uh, we hold this this, this, this treasure in earthen vessels. Let me, let me get this to, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. I need, to, I need you to read that one more time. Read that with me. Look, on, look, look, look at it. Look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Read it with me out loud. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. In other words, you, 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 you will look and you will, you, you, you at times and I at times, we will be so caught up in saying, God, I'm not worthy. God, you can't use me. God, how are you, how are you gonna use me? God, I can't possibly be able to do something for you. You can't possibly expect me to be a minister. You can't possibly be able to expect me to help somebody and encourage somebody. You can't possibly wanna use me. He says, he says listen, he says, listen, you, you are worried about the container. Somebody say the container. The container is flimsy. And what happens is, if we get so caught up in the frenzy of the flimsy container, then we'll never appreciate the power and the value of the content. Oh, I, 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 it says we hold this treasure. Somebody say, say this treasure. In other words, this is the content. There is a content that's in you as a container. You are the container, but God says there is a content that's in you that I've put in you, and that content that I've put in you is what adds value to the, to the container. 
but 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 God, you you can't possibly want to use me. I stutter. No, Moses, you're gonna go ahead and speak. He's and then he, then 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 here's what here's what's powerful. Here's what's powerful. Yeah, God says God says to Moses. God says, look. He said, what's in your hand? He said, look at what's in your hand. And and what was in Moses's hand was his rod. Somebody said his. Uh, he had a staff. He had a staff in his hand. And with that staff, God was able. God was able to do miraculous and wonderful things. Over in uh, over in uh, First Kings, I think it's First Kings chapter 17. First Kings chapter 17, write that down, or it might be Second Kings, I'm, I forget. Over in, uh, over in, over in uh, First or Second Kings? Second Kings? What, I think I gave it to you. I think I gave it to you over here. First Kings, praise God, pra praise God. Every now and then my, my container blinks. Amen. Over in First Kings chapter 17, uh, I told you last week about Elijah the prophet, how Elijah, God had told him to, to prophesy to all the people and tell them that there was going to be a, a, a drought and there wasn't going to be enough water. And there wasn't enough water, but God then sent him down to the brook where he, could, he would be fed by ravens. But then after leaving that brook, he then goes over and God sends him to a widow's house, a woman's house. And when he gets to that woman's house, that woman, that woman says, roll, roll, roll it up to me. Uh, come on. Um, yeah, it's after, it's after this pass. It's after this section. Okay, here we go. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. In other words, God is going to provide for you in a supernatural way through, uh, through somebody, through a container that you wouldn't even expect. All right, continue. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was gathering sticks, and he called her and said, please bring me a little water and a cup that I may drink. And she, and as she's going to get it, he called her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, look at this. She said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in the jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Here's, here's what you got to catch. The, 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 the prophet asks her to come and bring him some food. And what she says is, I barely have enough for me and my son. In other words, I really don't have anything of value to offer you. I really don't have anything of value to offer you. And he says, what's in your house? Consider what's in your house. What's in your house is what you need to bring to me. He says, bring me that first. He says, bring me that first. Y'all, uh, okay, y'all uh, didn't see that part. Verse 13, and Elijah said, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. Somebody say first. Now, how in the world, if I only have a little bit of stuff, how in the world, listen, I cannot possibly hook you up if, 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 if I barely have enough for myself. And see, the thing was, she did not recognize, she did not recognize the, 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 the value of what it was because she was so caught up in the frenzy of looking at the container. And here's what I'm saying. Sometimes we're looking so much at the situation in our lives and the pain in our lives that we fail to see that God has put something in us that's valuable. And here this woman is. She she is, she is, she's discounting something that's powerful and that God wants to use to be a blessing and to provide for this man. She is discounting it and she's calling it common. And a lot of times that's what we do in church. We, 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 we view, we view divine things as common or we, in our own lives, we view something great that God wants to use. We view it as common and useless. But God says, listen, what you need is right in you. Somebody say, it's in me. It's in me. He says, he says, you already have what is needed to, to, hook, to, 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 uh, to, to hook yourself up and to hook, and to hook the, uh, the preacher up, to hook the prophet up in this, particular, in this particular situation. And so what God is trying to show you is this. Even though you look at the container and you say, well, well I can't possibly be, be the one that God wants to use. God can't possibly use me in that way. God can't possibly do these miracles through me. But God wants you to be a participant in your miracle. Can I show it to you? Can I show it to you? Let me go back. Take, take me back to the, our, our text. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. He says, listen. He says, now unto him who is able. Somebody say, he's able. He's Pay attention to this, Cassidy. He's able to do he is able to do exceeding amen abundantly above all that we could ask or think in other words it's bigger than you think somebody says bigger than you think but don't miss this don't miss this here's the part that a lot of us miss when we quote this scripture 
we, we, we sing the song, but we never catch the tail end of this verse. It says, according. Somebody say according. according. Do I have to teach according again? Remember, according is all about it being proportionate to what you have. <laughs> Propor in other words, according, somebody say according. In accordance with or in line with, proportionate with, the power that works in you. In other words, he wants to work. He, he said, look, the exceeding is coming out of you. The abundance is coming out of you. The above is coming out of you. The all, the, the all that you can ask or think, the reason why you can't even think it or can't even stretch your mind to it is because you don't realize that I've already put it inside you. And if I've poured it into you, I poured it into you proportionate to my own glory I poured my glory into you and when I poured my glory into you now according to that power and that glory that I poured into you I can now do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to that power that is now in you God wants you to be a participant but the problem is many times we're, 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 we're asking God for too small stuff we're, we're asking God we're, we're not asking God for big things we're not expecting great things from God. We, 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 and the reason why we're not expecting great things from God is because we're so caught up in looking at what we can do in the natural. But God says, just like I said last Sunday, if God is going to lead you there, he's going to supernaturally provide. He's going to open a door for you that you now, you thought was closed. You thought it was closed six months ago. You thought that they had already got this place. You thought that, they, that it was already over. You thought that the relationship was over. But God says, I've already already made provisions. I've already opened doors for you. And supernaturally, just in the nick of time, just when you didn't, just when you least expected it, God steps in and God shows up. When God shows up, God shows out. It's bigger than you think. In closing, in closing, a young man, just like you, Jarrell, a young man, just like two of y'all, young man, uh, had an idea for a business and he and in, in his uh, having this idea for a business he he decides he puts together a business proposal and a plan and he contacts an investor a, a venture capitalist to to invest in his in his vision in, in invest in his plan invest in his business idea and he he he, he invites the business uh, the, the the investor to dinner and they sit down to dinner they sit down to dinner, and and uh, and the venture, the boy, the boy, had, uh, he, you know, the, the young man, he had pretty much worked out that it was going, he was going to need about one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, maybe that's a small amount to y'all, but, uh, amen. He he needed one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. Amen. Uh, all right, now, all right. That's not a lot to you. That's that's fine. That's fine. Now he over here rapping. He ain't, he, you know. <laughs> all right, all right. $150,000. So he sits down and, and he, doesn't, he doesn't bring up the $150,000 at, at, while, the, while the salad's being served. He didn't, during, the, during the appetizers, he's sitting there. He's, he's getting to know, he's smoozing and talking to the guy and telling him all about his business and telling him all about how great it will be and everything. And, he, and he's working his way up to it because he's, he's nervous about having to bring up that number. He's, he's thinking, okay, I, I really want this, I really need this, but, 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 but you know, bringing up that kind of money at, 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 uh, during the appetizers, that's not really, you know, that's not the kind of thing you bring up over salad, right? So he wasted after the main course, during dessert, and everything and he finally says he says sir and uh, if you if, if, if you if you're willing to invest I need hundred fifty thousand dollars that's what it's gonna cost to get it launched and to get to get through my first couple of years and the, and the, uh, the man says um, well son um, I think you have the wrong person <laughs> I think you have the wrong person. And the young man, of course, is, is, is destroyed. He's, he's just depressed on the inside. He's just despondent. He, 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 he doesn't know what to do. And, and just as he's about to say something, uh, before he can speak, the man says, he says, yeah, I, I think you have the wrong person. He said, uh, our business, our business doesn't, we, 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 don't, we don't do any investments below $2 million. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he said, come back to me. Give me a call when you need more. 
See, the problem is some of us are asking God for too little. We don't realize that our God is exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We're trying to get, we're asking God based on what we can think and what we can do and what we can figure out and what we saw so-and-so have or what we saw so-and-so. And God says, no, I can do greater than that. Eyes have not seen nor ears heard the things have, that God has prepared for them who love him. Listen, God says I can do it greater than whatever you think that you can. And then he, he can work He can work out miracles that go beyond your wildest dream. Turn to somebody and say, he can blow your mind. He can blow your mind. Give God a hand of praise in here. It's bigger than you think. It's bigger than, turn to somebody and say, it's bigger than you think. 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 What God has for you is bigger than you think. You, you, you're expecting one level, but God has bigger for you. But let me give you just one last thing. I told you I do five closes, right? Let me give you this one thing. Because it's bigger than you think, your preparation for it I told you that if you're going to be sent, if you're going to be sent, the, the, the disciples over in, the, over in Matthew, Mark, in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were called disciples. Somebody say disciples. And Jesus promised them the Holy Spirit. He said the Holy Spirit is coming. And after the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. And you will then be my witnesses. Huh? You'll be my witnesses. In, in, uh, in Jerusalem and in all Judea and into Samaria and into the uttermost parts of it. In other words, you're gonna, it's going to blow your mind. It's going to be so much bigger than what you expected. You thought we were just doing something that's going to be great for Jerusalem. You thought that it was just going to be something that could bless Rowlett. You thought it was something that could just bless your family or bless your, your neighborhood. You thought it was just something that was just going to bless you. But God says, no, it's beyond that. And here it is. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. The disciples, somebody say disciples. I got to give you, I got to give you this. The disciples in the Gospels, after they, 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 these containers, these were the same containers that Jesus promised the Holy Spirit, which is the content. And when you can understand the content and appreciate and, and understand how it goes into the container, then that is when you can, uh, that, that's when you can attain your miracle. When, if you want miracle things to happen in your life, you have to be able to appreciate and understand the content as well as the container. They were the containers in the, 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 the Gospels. They, the, the containers were called disciples. After Acts chapter 1 and Acts, Acts chapter 2, these men who were called disciples, that means someone who follows and someone who is trained, all right, after they were disciples there, when the power was poured into them, now they are all, they are, they are all referred to as what? Apostles. I told you before that if you're going to be, if you're going to be that one who God sends, you have to first be the one who God trains. He has to be able to train you, try you, and trust you. And listen, while you have the opportunity to go to college, go. While you have the opportunity to get back on track in school, do it. While you have the opportunity to do your work in school, do it. While you have the opportunity to turn Facebook off for a little while and then Instagram and Snapchat off for a little while to be able to focus on the things that you need, do it. You got to be trained. You, 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 can, you, you can miss that if you want to. You can, listen, listen. And I'm not just talking, about talking to the kids. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Amen. Some, some of us, some of us, we've been, planning to, we've been planning to get back on this and do that and do that and all this. All this have I got a witness? Listen. God wants you as a disciple, someone who is trained, someone who is being tested and tried. It means you go through some trials and some tough times, but the tests make you stronger and someone who he can trust. When he can trust you, then he can do bigger through you. Give the Lord a hand of praise, y'all. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, let's stand. Let's stand. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. Praise God. Praise God. They they still need to stand, right? For for, for Amen. Come on, stand. Amen. Amen. We're having we're having communion. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I pray you got a word today. I pray you got something out of the word today. Amen. And make no mistake about it, I'm preaching to myself too. Amen. I'm preaching to myself too. I can't wait for how much bigger God is going to do than what I was expecting. <laughs> Hallelujah. You say, well, Pastor, you always thinking big. Yeah, but you know, I'm human. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 is the passage that we'll be reading from. You don't have to turn there. You don't have to turn there. At this time, we're, we're uh, celebrating the institution of communion. Amen. Amen. If you will, uh, follow the direction of Brother Paul. Y'all sing that out loud. I know it was. I know it was. I got three people singing, y'all. No, it was. One day he died. I have one more. Hallelujah. Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it he may break the bread amen he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me You may eat of the bread. Amen. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You may drink of the cup. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Repeat after me, Lord. Come on, say it out loud and proud. Lord, help me to help myself. Lord, help me to help somebody else. In Jesus' name, I glorify you. I praise you. I thank you for your sacrifice. Do something big in me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed. You are dismissed. Take three minutes to fellowship. Amen. Meet somebody that you, had, that you don't know, that you hadn't talked to before. Amen. Or that you don't know well. Amen. God bless you.